supernatural advantage. Salvation is not to belong to each other. Salvation is partnership with God in the midst of redemption to change the world. If that is the agenda of God, then there must be the way of God. For he made his ways known to Moses and his act to Israel. He said, For thou will show me thy path of life in thy presence. There is something God can show a man that under 24 hours he has become a global phenomenon. There is something. We don't come for God with those things. That is why we lose out in life. A man who has secured the secret of heaven. Captain uh, Kuma said, a man who has secured the treasure of heaven, he has found the treasure. There's a man who has secured something in the spirit, has found the treasure of heaven. No man can secure the treasure of heaven and be a trash on the earth. No man. All the men we celebrate today, listen to me, all the great voices in leadership, teaching leadership, training leadership, leadership training and teaching, they are all pastors. <laughs> pastors. Pastor Mas Moro. Pastor John Maxwell. Those are voices on the earth. What do they know that made them people of stature in their generation? That organizations, IBM, Microsoft, the Navy, is pursuing them. Teach us your secrets. They got something, sir. Job 39 verse 4 said, As I was in the day, that is why it is a pain in the, in the it's a pain in the heart of God for a Christian to live a carnal life. You see, I'm not saying stay out of sin so you can make heaven. No, you want to make heaven as a choice. I am going to make heaven. It's very important. Make heaven very important. But that is not my drive for you. My drive for you is that stay out of sin, stay holy, so you can secure the secrets of God. For the secrets of God is revealed to the righteous. The end of your experience is heaven, and you must make it. If you don't stay holy, if you don't live righteous, you will not make it down. It's true. But here on the earth, your throne will not be established without securing the hand of God. The secrets of God. You don't go to church to hear the pastor. You go to hear God. Behind his voice, the voice of God comes. He said, thou shalt hear a voice behind, behind you what your teachers are saying. Teaching, saying, this is the way we walk there in. Securing the secrets of God. Job did not respond. As I was in the days of my youth, my youth, not my old age, my youth, when the secret of God was supposed to tabernacle, as I was in the days of my youth, securing the secrets of God, an idea just tried. I said here before, God spoke to me and said, what inspired idea, one statement to make, one book to write, can put you on the global platform. Just one, that's only two, just one. Just one. Barack Obama gave only one speech, and that opened the world to him to the presidency. 2004, in the, in the Democratic Congress. In their Congress meeting, 2004, he made a speech, and the whole of America said, that is the man, that is the guy, that is the guy, that is the guy, that is the guy, and he ascended the throne. That was one speech. Oh, if somebody can just tap secrets of heaven, how do do Zagabaya? You will stop struggling. I know it well. Tonight we are speaking about divine encounters. Protocols of kingdom greatness. Part two. Divine encounters. A divine encounter simply is meeting with God. Simple. Meeting with God. A man meeting with God. You can never meet with God and remain ordinary. Oh, I saw God yesterday. I, I, I saw Jesus in my dream. And you are seeing the, uh, the way you are. <laughs> There's this movie called Fantastic Four. I don't know what Fantastic Four. 
they were exposed to some chemicals in, on the moon. What did they say? <laughs> their entire biological system was altered. It was they didn't like it. It was altered. Now, if a man can be exposed to chemicals on the moon, the moon that God created, the chemical God created, and the man is not the same. How much more you meeting with the Creator God? No man meets with God and remains the same. It's a lie. I saw God yesterday. I saw God today. I met God yesterday. God woke up this morning. Me and God. God spoke to me today. God spoke to me. Ah, See? God just came to me. That's in this Sunday. He didn't say anything again. That's in this Sunday. I sat with that word and began to dig into that word. We are here today. That shows God really spoke to me, sir. I heard from God. I saw God yesterday. Me and God ate breakfast. Fallacy. 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 This deception. God came to me and said, So, if what you have is not the harvest you desire, it's a seed, so it. Now, all of you know God really spoke to me about it. It's not God's fault to me, God's fault to me. You can say it. This ministry has zero financial concern. Zero. I won't lie to you, Jesus' name. Zero financial concern at our level. Oh, God save money. We need prayer for other things. Why? There are parents of divine encounters. I had it. No, God spoke about what you have. He said, hey, what do you guys do? You can see it today. Those who doubted that God spoke to me today, they are far. See that God spoke to the guy. So to the girl. Don't tell me God spoke to you. <laughs> if we cannot see appreciable manifestation of that thing, you can never meet with God and remain the same. It's, you can't. Even if it is ignorantly, give me some few people. Now, every divine encounter will leave you with either a mandate, an assignment, an idea, an instruction, or a burning passion. Any encounter with God, any divine encounter will either leave you with a mandate. God doesn't visit people for visiting sake. He doesn't say, okay, let me just visit this shit. Okay, visit him because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of heaven. No! If you see God coming down to visit anybody, he has come down because he wants to deliver a mandate. He wants to deliver an idea, an instruction, a vision, something, an assignment. That when that person pursues that thing, greatness is born in this life. That's it. You can never meet with God and remain the same. We saw Jeremiah encountering God in vision. He was never the same. We saw Moses and Gideon encountering God and receiving the divine mandate. They were never the same. Jacob encountered God in a dream and had a divine idea. He was never the same. He was a sofa head. Jacob encountered a divine name in God and never remained the same. Saul of Tarsus met with God, met with Jesus. He was never the same. Abraham met with God, never the same. Nehemiah met God with a consuming passion, born in him, never the same. Solomon met with God in a dream, he was never the same. What makes you think you are meant to go in the same? And so if you say you met God, if I tell you how I walk before God told me about my life, you will pity me. Ah, ah, that is the people who don't believe me, I don't blame them. Because I was talking what is far above my head. I, I speak according to the size of my vision, not according to my size. My mouth is according to my sight, not according to my state. Listen, my mouth, my words are according to my sight, not according to my state. My words are according to my sight, 
Lamentation 3. 2, 53 or 352, either of them. He said, My heart has affected my eyes because of the daughters of my people. My heart is affecting my eyes. That is, my vision is affecting my passion, my pursuit. Now, the goal of every encounter is to back conviction inside you. The goal of every, every encounter, every meeting with God, God wants to bend a conviction inside you. It's only men of conviction that change the world. Men who vacillate here and there don't do nothing in the world. The goal of every encounter is to bend conviction inside you. Convictions bear faith. Faith bear actions. And actions bring results. God came down to me, I think August last year, and said, This month shall be for business and carry miracles. Oh boy. <laughs> you all saw it. You all saw it. Every encounter is to bear the conviction. I believe it. I believe it. And that conviction is to bear faith. And faith to check action. So when the, when don't again, please don't miss the youth in business career conference. See, I say it casually. I'm not a prophet. You see. But as a son of the prophet, I have a prophetic heritage. Oh, eh, are you a business now? You want to be teaching business? What is your own sense? Want to teach or you can go your way? Sit down there. <laughs> Sit down there. Sit down there. <laughs> so God spoke to me again, and it has been conviction. Conviction has been faith that as that teaching goes on. Those three days shall be days of encounters with divine ideas that shall lead people to strange businesses. So I put action to it. 25th, 26th, 27th. Don't miss it for anything. When Noah encountered God, Genesis 6 30 to 14, God delivered to him an instruction Build me an ark. Abraham encountered God. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Leave your father's house and instruction. On Twitter, I will show you vision. Eyes can count that God. Genesis 26, 2 and 4. Don't go down to Egypt. Dwell in Islam. And I'll make you great. Now, in, chapter, in the same chapter, verse 12 to 14, I'm saying, and the man became great. He went forward. Became very good to the Philistine and beat him. An instruction. An instruction. Jacob met with God. Genesis 30. 37 to 43. And God gave him an idea. An idea. That led to his goodness. An idea. That led to his goodness. Every divine encounter leaves you with either an instruction, a mandate, an assignment. A passion, a drive that when you engage in it, will part of greatness. That is one of the protocols of kingdom greatness. To be great in this kingdom, you desire encounters. Now, let's go with it. You will see all the prophets, Isaiah, and the word of God came unto me, Isaiah, or the word of who just said, Sounds even so. Jeremiah and the word of God came to me. Jeremiah 1, you know, 1 verse 4. The word of God, now you can encounter God by his spirit in visions or by words in his word. Ezra encountered God. Hagar, Hagar 1 verse 1, 2 and 3 encountered God. Habakkuk encountered God. They were all not, they were all unknown. They were in the darkness. They were hidden. Nobody knew them. We never knew of any Isaiah until the word came. We never knew of any Nehemiah until the word came. 
We never knew of Jacob. It's like he sent a word unto Jacob, into Jacob, and the word lighted Israel. We never knew of any Ezra. We never knew Habakkuk. We never knew of Nehu. We never knew of any of them. But the appearance of the world, that encounter, provoked something in them that became global phenomenon, transgenerational phenomenon, phenomenon. Today, all of us are saying, Habakkuk said, Nehemiah said, Isaiah said, do you know him? But by their encounters with God, put sugar. Now, the encounters with God made them global phenomenal encounters. They met with God, or God met with them, gave them some words. When they began to roll with those words, they imagined men of their generation. <laughs> 